All right, Lynette, you are going to love this place, Cupid's Winery. We're just yeah. at the back of Aladala, which is beautiful. It is amazing, and we're only two hours from Sydney. I oh, know, how cool yeah. is that? Amazing. Now listen, can you catch up with Rosie? Sure. She's the matriarch, runs yeah. the whole show here. She'll get you the rundown, and then uh, I'm going to go and see what the boys are up to. Okay, whereabouts? Oh, don't worry about it, it's fine. Rosie, thank you so much for having us today. It's a pleasure to have you here. Tell me all about Cupid's Winery. Well, Cupid's Winery, actually, it's a very special year for us this year. We're 10 years old, really? which is amazing. Um, you know, obviously opened in 2007 with a, a little restaurant and our winery, and, and we've grown to be a, a still a winery, but we're now a brewery, a fromagerie, and our, our seating has grown to 120. Wow, all yeah. in 10 years. Yeah, it's been, it's been busy. <laughs> It's and this good. is your family business as well, isn't it? It is, and yeah, I'm really proud yeah, to have the kids on board. And I see that you now have cheese on offer. We always intended to do cheese, um, and initially I was making the wine here, and then Wally now makes, my son Wally makes yep. the wine, and now I've diversified to make the cheese. So I spent six years studying here and in France wow. to uh, set up our little fromagerie. It's become a very popular destination restaurant here because the view is magnificent. It's yeah. so lovely to be here, enjoying the lovely Milton countryside. And we do lots of weddings as well. It's a lovely yeah. setting for a wedding. Do you find that you get most people locally or are people doing the big trip up here because it's such a beautiful destination? Well, it's a bit of a mix, but we do get a lot of day trippers. We get yep. people from Wollongong and Canberra and a lot from southern Sydney and right. the Highlands. It's uh, very nice to just sit out on the deck and have a bit of a simple menu as well as our a la carte menu in the restaurant. But we yep. also offer a very nice uh, snack style on the deck. And we've got a wonderful team of chefs in the kitchen led by Russell Chin. Yep. And Russell's been with us for six years and wow. it's a blend of uh, French, English um, cuisine. And we just use what's fresh and local as much as we can. And we've got a great veggie garden. So all of our greens come from the veggie garden with our herbs. And we've just planted a lot of potatoes this year. So we'll have two tonnes of potatoes to put on our menu as well. <laughs> Lots yeah. of hot chips. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> so everything, all the herbs and spices that you use, do you actually grow those yourself? We do grow all of our herbs. Yes, yeah. we do. And it, it's a, a great little garden. And we, we also are very sustainable with our recycling because we've got ducks and chickens so they get a lot of the scraps and we've got a great lot of worm farms that uh, we're uh, feeding all of the scraps to as well and um, of course all of that worm weed goes onto the onto the uh, plants so we're, it's, they're very healthy without any chemicals. Rosie thank you so much I am so excited about popping in and trying some lunch but I don't know where Scott is I haven't seen him in a while he was mm. last spotted walking towards the brewery which could be dangerous. <laughs> Hey Wally, there is a man on a mission. Look at you go. This place has changed so much. It's gone gangbusters. Yeah, we um, we're in about 25 different beers through the year at the moment. We have a few staples, but everything else is a seasonal rotational beer. We try to change it up quite a bit. So, how do you choose the beers you're going to brew? Is it something about what you like, or is it about what you think will sell well? Yeah, so we try to brew beers that we like to drink. You know, there's so many different styles of beer that you can brew from around the world, and we're pretty much recreating these beers that we like to drink and put our own little spit on it. So this is really a white region, isn't it? It is. Back here? Yeah. What so do you specialise in then? So we are a maritime climate, so we have the kind of more pressure with the rainfall. Um, we specialise in Savion Blanc. So if you grow the right variety and create the right style of wine, you can make interesting wines that suit the climate. Well, you guys have got it going on. You know what you're doing as far as you know creating these beauties. I know what I'm doing as far as tasting. So I'm going to head inside, have a little taste of your beer, maybe a tipple of wine. Everybody will be happy. Yeah, we can arrange that for you, no problem. Especially me. It was time to catch up with Lynette for a quick wine tasting before we indulged in Cupid's Fine Fair. Scott, I never doubted you for a second, but today has been amazing. The food, the wine, the scenery. 
beautiful spot, isn't it? Great bars in the room. Let's face it, it's just one of New South Wales South Coast gems, and there's plenty more to come. Oh well, yeah, wait till you see what I've got on my sleeve next. Really? Yes. Really? After this, of course. I'm intrigued. <laughs> bon appetit. Enjoy. Here on the New South Wales South Coast, there are accommodation options to suit every style and budget. Whether you're after a beachfront hotel or perhaps a cute little farm guest house, whatever it is, make sure you head to the Hotels Combined app where you'll get the best price guaranteed. Here are our top five picks for hotels on the New South Wales South Coast. Mollymook Cove Apartments Mollymook. Harbourview Service Apartments Ulla Dulla. Huskisson Bed and Breakfast Huskisson. Batemans Bay Manor Bed and Breakfast, Batemans Bay. Bannisters, Molly Mook.